We're going to start with a new project in our Connected Components Workbench and we'll just call it Counters. Then we're going to go to Controllers and the Micro 820 and we have a 2080 LC20 20QWB and we're using version 12 and I highly recommend that you use at least version 12 since we're using that Logics theme. We're going to add it to our project and let's go ahead and set up that Ethernet configuration. We're going to configure our IP address for the default IP of our PLC trainer, which is 192.168.110. And we're going to use a subnet of 255.255.255.0. Next, we're going to right click programs, add ladder diagram. And let's go ahead and double click on program one. And in our grouped instructions, you'll need to find the timer and counter. Now, if you haven't figured it out yet, you can actually drag these around to put them where you want them. And by default, your timer one is gonna be like way over here, somewhere in the middle. So just go over here, find timer and counter. And then if I was you, I would drag it on over here where it'll be really convenient. Our first element, we're going to use a bit instruction. We're going to use the direct contact, examine if closed. And we're going to go to our IO tab and we are going to look at button one, which is connected to input four. And before we select that, let's go ahead and label that as button one. And we're also going to be using two, three, and four. So those are five, six, and seven. So let's go ahead and label those while we're here also. Button two, button three, and button four. And let's go ahead and identify our lights while we're at it, because we're gonna use light one, two, three, and four. So output zero is gonna be light one. Output one is gonna be light two. Output two is gonna be light three. And output four is gonna be light four. Now let's select input four, click OK. And then we're gonna to go to our timer counter tab and we're gonna bring down the CTU counter. This is a count up counter. And then for our preset value here, we're gonna use a value of 10. Now let's add another rung and let's add a direct contact, examine if closed. And this time we're gonna to go to button two. And now let's go to our timer and counter tab and let's use the CTD counter. And we're also going to put its preset value at 10. And finally, there's one other type of counter and that is a count up down counter. And what it does is it combines this count up counter and this count down counter. So we're going to make a rung for it also. So let's add another rung and let's go back to our bit instructions and bring down the direct contact. And this time we're gonna go back to this button one. We're gonna use button one again for this. And then let's go to the timer counter tab and bring down that CTUD. That is our count up down counter. And let's make its preset also 10. Now let's talk about some of these other fields here because even up on our count up counter, we had this reset here. And so that can be assigned to reset this counter anytime. So let's go ahead and make it button three. Now on the count down counter, we have what's called a load. Let's go ahead and make it button four. And then on our count up, count down counter, we actually have both the reset and the load. So let's go ahead and map them the same. Let's put the reset of it at button three and let's put the load of it at button four. And that's a good start. So let's go ahead and download this program and see what all it does. Now I'm not gonna go through all the steps of how to configure your communications. We have videos on how to do that over ethernet and over serial. 
So if you're having any trouble, just look down in the description. I'll put links to all of those. Make sure you put the processor back in run mode after you're done. And let's concentrate on this count up counter and rung one first. So if we press button one, then the counter value is gonna go up to one. Now note if you press and hold the button, it's gonna go up just to two. It doesn't continue to count. It only counts each time the button is pressed. There's three, and let's just go ahead and hit that all the way up to nine. And when we press it the 10th time, we're gonna see this Q line turn red, which means that it is true. And the Q bit will be true whenever this counter value is greater than or equal to this preset value. Well, the other bit we have here is this reset, which we have connected to button three. And when we press this reset, it's gonna zero out that counter. And that's the basics of the count up counter. Now in a little bit, I'm gonna show you how to actually do things with it, but let's go ahead and go through the count down counter to make sure we understand it. So right now the qubit on our countdown counter is true. And it is true because this counter value is less than or equal to zero. So let's go ahead and press button two here. And really you don't see any change in this countdown counter. And that's because a countdown counter is truly a countdown counter. So since it's at zero, it's not gonna go any lower. So on this one, the other bit we had was the load button, which is connected to button four. And when we press that, it is gonna take the preset value and move it to the counter value. And immediately our qubit is now false. So if we press button two, it's gonna drop to nine. We press it again, it's gonna drop to eight. Also same as the count up counter, if you press it and hold it, you can hold it forever, it's still only gonna count down one time. So we press it again, six, five, four, three, two, one, and finally we press it one more time and make this counter value zero, our qubit is gonna be true again. So that's the basics of the count down counter. Now the count up down counter combines the two of those and it's a really useful instruction. Now before we start on it, I just caught a mistake I made and we're gonna to need to go offline and fix this. I forgot to map this count down bit because I wanted it on button two and I just forgot to. So let's go ahead and disconnect and then let's go here and let's select button two for that CD bit and go ahead and download that program. And now let's look at this count up down counter. So our counter value is at zero right now and we have a QU and we have a QD bit. Now our QD is true right now and our QU is false. So just so we can understand what that does, let's go ahead and press button one, one time. And that takes our QV up to one and that QD bit goes out. So the QD bit is the Q of that countdown counter. And it says that your counter value is less than or equal to zero. So now that it is one, it's gonna be false. So let's go ahead and bring that counter all the way up to 10. If you want to stop at nine for a second so you can see it. But the moment that we go to number 10, you're gonna see this QU bit become true because our counter value will now be greater than or equal to our preset value. So from that standpoint, it works exactly the same as a count up counter with the addition of this QD bit that tells you that it equals zero. Well, what's great about this one is if we press button two, it's gonna take our counter value back to nine, dropping up the QU bit. And it can come back down to say six, back down to five, then maybe it goes back up to eight and it can go back down to zero. And again, the QD would be true. So what would be an application for this? The biggest application for this would be a machine part counter that also has a defect counter that knocks parts off. So we get 10 good parts and then it goes through a QC at the end of the machine and it says, well, one was bad. It can subtract that one and take it back to nine so that you get an accurate part count. And there's tons of other applications for them as well. So on this one, we also had that reset and that load instruction. 
Well, they work exactly the same as they did in the count up and count down counter. So if we press button four, it's gonna load the preset value into the counter value. And if we press the reset button, it is going to put a zero into the counter value. So now let's see what we can do with these counters. And we're just gonna stick with this count up down counter for the rest of this video, because I think you understand that the count ups cue is this QU bit, and the count downs cue is this QD bit. So we can use that one counter to do the rest of this and just simplify the rest of the exercise. So let's disconnect. Go ahead and delete rungs one and two. And now let's leave the count up down counter rung just like it is. And let's go ahead and add a new rung. And first let's play with these Q bits and see what all you can do with them. So let's go to the bit instructions and let's go ahead and use the direct contact and let's just type C T U D and there goes the count up down counter dot and here are all the bits for it so let's look at this qd bit to start with and now let's use this direct coal output energize and let's turn on light one now let's just copy and paste that wrong And for the next one, let's look at the QU bit. Let's copy and paste that again. And let's look at the CU bit. And let's put it on output number two, which is light three. And let's paste that wrong one more time. And let's put this one at the QD bit. And let's make that one go to output three, which is going to be light four. Now let's go ahead and download this program. Got to recharge the flux capacitor. And immediately we get a green light here. So let's make sure we understand why. Right now our counter value is less than or equal to zero. That's going to make this QD bit true. And that is why that light is on. Now, if we press button one, the green light's immediately gonna go out. So just press it and let right back off of it. And green light is out. And you also saw for a second that the red light came on. And that is the CU bit. And what that means is that this count up right here is enabled. So if we press and hold it, then we can see that it is true signified by the red here. So that can be really useful. Let's say that there was like 10 things before this counter here. Instead of having to put those 10 things again in another rung to do something else, then you could just use the CU bit for that. Let off, that's gonna go out. So let's press button two. And we already know that yes, it is gonna go down one on its counter value, but yeah, light four is coming on. And light four is coming on because the CD bit is true. That means that that countdown part is currently true. So go ahead and press button one till we get up to 10 and light two is gonna come on because the QU bit, which says that the counter value is greater than or equal to the preset value is true. A couple other things while we're here is we can press button one as many more times as you want. The counter does not continue up. And same, if we bring it all the way down, it won't go past zero. And since we're here, let's press button three, which is tied to our reset, and our counter value is gonna go back to zero, which is gonna make the QD bit true. And button four is that load bit, and that's gonna put the preset value into the counter value. When we press it, the QU is gonna be true because the counter value is now greater than or equal to the preset value. Now, while we're here, let's go over here to local variables. And that's gonna bring up this counter instruction. And here's those same bits. And just click on this tab here and drag it out. And let's just get it where we can kind of see everything that's going on here. Let's just drag that out a little bit so that we can see the values. 
And just to show, yes, if we press button one, we're gonna get a one into this count up enable box. Button two, it's gonna get a one into the count down enable box. So it's the same things you're seeing over here. But one thing a lot of people don't believe that you can do is really you can type the value in here and it doesn't break the counter like a lot of people say. It doesn't confuse it or anything. So if I put a 10 here, you're gonna see light two immediately turn on. And if I put a zero here, you're gonna see light one immediately come on. And if I put a five in here, it's gonna make that light go out. And that's not breaking the counter. There's nothing wrong with manually entering a counter value. And you'll see a lot of times that, you know, say we have our machine part counter we were talking about earlier and it's counting parts and then it has quality control at the end. And when it rejects a part, it's subtracting those. But maybe an operator gets that final look at it and says, okay, it says we have seven good parts, but we only have five good parts. Well, that'll, usually on a touch screen, you could probably touch it there and change it to five. So hopefully that helped you better understand what the bits do. But now let's talk about things that you can do with the actual counter values and start looking at some of the compare instructions. So let's go ahead and go offline and we can leave, we'll leave these rungs just as they are. We're actually gonna take out all of these examine if open direct contacts and you can leave the light side though because we're gonna reuse those. And let's go find our compare tab. And here you're gonna see some instruction that we can use to look at the actual counter value to determine things. For starters, let's take this less than or equal to and let's drag it down and let's type that counter CTUD underscore one dot CV. And let's just start with zero on this. So this is gonna say if our counter value is less than or equal to zero, turn on light one. Next, let's use a greater than instruction. And let's say that we want that counter CTUD underscore one dot CV. And let's use the number five. Next, let's grab another greater than and put it here. And we're gonna use that same counter value that we've been using. And we're gonna say that it's greater than six, but also let's drag a less than instruction here. And let's look at that same counter value again. And let's say it's gotta be less than nine. And finally, let's grab the greater than or equal to instruction. And we're gonna use that same counter value. And let's make this one 10. And this will be the same as the QU bit that says that if the counter value is greater than or equal to the preset, then it would be true. Let's go ahead and download that. And immediately we get light one on. So let's look here and we have a less than or equal to instruction. So if our counter value, which is currently at zero is less than or equal to zero, then this is gonna be true. So it's gonna pass true conditions to this output energize, which is gonna go right a one, two output zero. Go ahead and press button one and immediately light one goes out. So the counter value is now one, which is not less than or equal to zero. So it's gonna be false, passes false conditions over. It's gonna go right to zero. So let's go ahead and press button one just until we see something happen. Okay, and in a value of six, we're gonna get light two on. Light two, if that counter value is greater than five, then this is gonna be true. So let's press button one again, and now light three is gonna be on. And that is because we're saying that light three is on if the counter value is greater than seven, but less than nine. So we'll press it, bring it up to eight, nine, and that makes light three go out. And finally, when we press it for 10, we're gonna get light four on.